hey what is going on guys welcome to part 3 of this android kotlin beginner tutorial series on tic-tac-toe in this one we'll finally be making a functioning tic-tac-toe game in the last video we finished up with this layout now let's switch over to the main activity kotlin file please note that the main activities on create function is creating the layout from activity underscore main xml file all right first of all we create a late init var name it buttons and it would be a two-dimensional array of button elements the late init keyword is used when you define a variable but you cannot initialize it then and there in this case we cannot initialize the buttons just yet because the layout has not been created yet uh, it would be created inside the onCreate function after the setContentView method has run. Now let's create another latent variable, name it TextViewPlayer1 and set the type to TextView. Create another TextView variable for Player2. Now we'll create four more variables. The Player1 turn variable would help us keep track of which player's turn it is. The round count variable keeps track of the total game rounds and the last two variables keep track of the scores of each player. Now inside the onCreate function, after setContentView, we initialize our three latent variables. We first initialize the player1 and player2 text views using findViewById method. The findViewById method returns a reference to the view. Uh, with r.id.player1 text view, we are asking find view by id to give us an Android resource with an ID of player1 text view. Next, we initialize the two dimensional buttons array as two nested arrays of size 3 each, and each element of this array is returned by an init buttons function which takes in the row and column number as an argument. Now we are going to define the init buttons function. It takes two arguments of type int and it has a return type of button. In this function, we'll first get the reference to the button using find view by id and hold it in a button variable. Now the find view by id function takes in the resource identifier as an argument and we are going to generate this identifier dynamically. We do this using the resources.getIdentifier method which takes in three arguments the resource name, type and package name. Once we have the reference to the button we are going to set an onClickListener to it using the setOnClickListener method. For now we will just display a small message when the user clicks the button. To do this we write toast.maketext it takes in the application context as the first input, the second input is the text we want to display and the third input is the duration for which we want to display the message. And after this we tell it to show this. Then we return the button. The next thing we are going to do is set an on click listener to the reset game button. Now name the variable btn reset, give it a type of button and set it equal to find view by id and pass it the id of the reset button. Next we set an on click listener to this reset button. Again we'll just display a small toast message that will read reset game button clicked. Now let's run this. We can see the toast messages pop up when we click each of these buttons. Alright, everything seems to be working fine, let's move on. Now we'll just remove the toast inside the init buttons function and replace it with a new on btn click function. Let's define this on button click function now. This function takes in a button as an input and since we are not going to return anything, we don't need to specify any return type. Now in this function, first of all we want to check if the button has already been clicked. We do this by writing if btn.text is not equals to null and if this is true that means the button has already been clicked and in this case we don't want to do anything so we just return. 
Now in case the button is empty and if it's player 1's turn then we put an X over the button and if player 1 turn is false we put an O over it. Before we go ahead and run this we first need to go to our layout and clear out all these text attributes on these buttons. Once we have put an X or an O over the button, we need to increment the round count variable and also switch the turn of the player. Now let's run this and see if it works. Uh, well, this isn't working and that is because we have put a null here. Instead of this, we need to put an empty string and it should work now. Okay, now we can put the exo there. Now let's go back to the button click function and finish this. After incrementing the round count variable, we are going to check if somebody has won with check for win function. If this returns true, then we run the win function for player 1 if it was player 1's turn. If not, we run the win function for player 2. If check for win returns false, then next we need to check if the round count variable is equal to 9. If it is so, that means all the buttons have been clicked and we call the draw function. And if isn't any of the above cases, that means the game is still going on and we just switch the player's turn. Now let's define the win, draw and check for win functions. In the check for win function, we first define a fields variable similar to the buttons variable, but this one holds the text values of the buttons. Now in this fields array, we are going to check all the rows, columns and diagonals if they have same value. If they do, we'll say there's a winner. We first loop through all the rows to check if any of those is filled with the same non-empty value. If yes, then we return true. Next we'll loop through all the columns and do the same. Finally, we check for two diagonals. If none of the cases are true, we return false. Now let's write the win function. This one takes an integer as an input and based on this input we'll increment either player 1 or player 2 points and then we'll display a winning toast message. Let's now write the draw function. In this one we'll just put a toast message saying match draw. Alright guys, let's run this. But this is not going to work properly because I've made the same mistake. Sorry guys, need to go back and change all those null values to empty string again. Before we rerun this, we need to go over to the win function and do two more things. We need to update the player1 and player2 text views to reflect the new scores and we need to clear the board once the game is over. For this, we'll create two more functions, update score and clear board. Put this new update score function in the win function and the clear board function in both win and draw functions. Now let's define these clear board and update score functions. In the clear board function, we first loop through all the buttons in the buttons array and set their text property to an empty string. Next we reset the round count variable to 0 and set the player1 turn variable to true. In the update score function, we set the text property of player1 and player2 text views to reflect the new scores. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's run this now. Player one one. Exo exo exo. Player two one. Now let's make this one draw. Now the reset game button is not working, so. Let's implement the reset game button. We'll just remove the toast from here. 
set the player 1 and player 2 points to 0 and update the score and then clear the board. Ok, let's give it a final go. And there you have it. We finally have a functioning tic-tac-toe app. In the next and the final part of this series, we will upgrade our app's UI and turn it into this beauty. You can check out a more detailed version of this tutorial on my blog, link in the description below. Alright guys, this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.